Hi, I'm Matthew Dulles from the Science of Psychotherapy, and I'd like to share with you a quick snippet from our podcast. And this is me talking with Richard Hill about the history of mirroring hands. And I want to pick your brains about your book and the technique that you've been traveling all over the world teaching people about, mirroring hands. Well, yes, here it is. This this, this is what um, editors do in their spare time. <laughs> Wonderful. Oh, it's, a, it's, yep. it's, a, it's one of those books that, um, uh, you know, it, it's sort of two decades in the making and maybe a lifetime. I mean, I've been uh, working with the wonderful Ernest Rossi mm. as my mentor for uh, since 2005. And, uh, you know, this book has emerged out of out of his, uh, I, I guess, his decision that that I'm ready. Uh, okay. And there are different people around the world doing different things in relation to Ernie's work. But uh, he wants uh, he's he's asking me to have some response ability in mm. relation to the mirroring hands practice, which is a very a particular form of uh, uh, of therapeutic engagement. But it's really all about a way of practice okay. Uh, okay. that is applicable across everywhere. And, and it's the thing that is, I think, what's missing from practice and, and to some extent what's the error of, uh, of practice. Okay, so before we get into exactly what it is that you're doing here, um, so obviously Ernie has um, passed the baton to you. Uh, to give us a little bit of uh, insight into like how did that all happen uh, and sort of where does this mirroring hands, where is it coming out of? Because it's got a, quite a history. Well, certainly. I mean, uh, Ernie Rossi was being mentored by Milton Erickson uh, mm -hmm. in the 70s. They spent a lot of time together and Milton Erickson, you know, has had uh, uh, lots of students before then, David Cheek, uh, and lots of others. Um, but Ernest was one of his principal uh, students and wrote a lot of books with him in the in the 70s uh, before he said passing away and sudden passing away in, in yeah. uh, 1980 and and so Ernest has taken things on uh, from where we were with Ericsson there's right. there's a lot taught about Ericsson there's a lot that's really important to teach but mm -hmm. Ernie found that there could be even less or there could be even less effort and work by the therapist in order to facilitate the therapeutic benefit and there could be more work by the NF, by the therapist in order to help the client be the facilitator of their their treatment mm. and i i guess what really uh, has been going along in a lot of therapeutic uh, processes hypnotherapy certainly but uh, various forms of art therapy various forms of silent therapy sensory motor therapy it's all about not necessarily working through the cognitive, just through the talk, just through the, the verbal engagement, but actually through some kind of connection to what's going on in the implicit world. And uh, knowing that, uh, uh, there we go, we've got the explicit world having a bit of a, uh, an alarm there. But um, a lot of work is done in the explicit world, but really a lot of the healing, a lot of the changes that occur to people occur outside of their conscious awareness. Uh, you know, we go to bed at night and wake up in the morning and go, oh, I feel better, or here's the answer to the problem. Mm. Uh, sometimes we stop doing what we're doing, go off and do something else, and halfway through uh, doing what it is we're doing, whether it's a sleep or whether it's a bit of activity, suddenly popping into our head will be this fantastic idea. And we think, aren't we a genius? Right. And it's yeah. not really like that. Well, if you want to know more about the science of psychotherapy, come across to our website, thescienceofpsychotherapy.com, and our podcast of the same name, and learn more about the science of you.